Hi you guys, today I'm going to talk to you about formula writing. In particular, I'm going to talk to you about subscripts and coefficients. Before we begin, make sure you have your highlighter with you, a pen or a pencil, something to write with, and your notes. Okay, Okay, let's get started. Let's start with subscripts. Subscripts, and remember that subscripts are the numbers that are written at the very bottom next to the name of the element. Subscripts tell you how many atoms of an element um, there are. So in this case, if we're looking at this, we have H2O. Then we have, since there isn't a number over here, we are going to say there is only one molecule of water. Okay, But this one molecule of water actually has two atoms of hydrogen, because this two actually belongs to the hydrogen, saying there are two atoms of it. And there isn't really a number here for the oxygen. So you're going to automatically assume the number 1. Even though you, it's not written, you assume that it is 1. So we have one atom of oxygen. So if we have one molecule of H2O, this is how an H2O molecule looks. And we only have one molecule of this. You can tell that we would only have one oxygen atom, but there's one, two hydrogen atoms. Okay, so let's do the practice here. Determine how many atoms of each element are in each formula below. You have A is cupric chloride. So if you have cupric chloride, the first element that we have is copper Cu, and since there isn't a number next to it, we're going to assume the number one, so we're going to say there's one atom of copper. We have Cl2. That is to say that there are two atoms of chlorine. Okay, so that two belongs with the chlorine. Ferric oxide, you have two atoms of iron, and you have here three atoms of oxygen. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about when there are parentheses, the subscript goes to each element inside the parentheses. So, um, the subscript goes to each element inside the parentheses. So what this is saying is that we have parentheses that are around our anion um, or our nonmetal, and this too will not only apply to the oxygen, but it will also go to the hydrogen. So this too, you distribute whatever's inside the parentheses. So we have one formula unit of calcium hydroxide, and that contains one calcium atom since there isn't a number here, we're going to assume the number 1, and we're going to say that there are two atoms of oxygen and two atoms of hydrogen. Okay, let's go on to the next page. Okay, so we've got two atoms of oxygen and two atoms of hydrogen. So when the subscripts go to the same element, you multiply. So here we have, and this is really important, so I'm just going to highlight the word multiply, okay? But now notice that you do have parentheses again, and once again you have this number. So you're going to take this number and you're going to multiply it within whichever elements are within the parentheses. Now what you're doing in reality is you're actually taking this number and you're multiplying it with the subscripts of the element. Since nitrogen only has one, we say that it, um, for nitrogen it is um, one times two. Okay, so let's talk about this. You have one formula unit of stannous nitrate and this one, form one formula unit um, contains one atom of tin since there is only one, there isn't a number, so we're going to assume the number one. And nitrogen, well, this is already, there's the number one, so one nitrogen, but remember, it's times two, so you're going to multiply it by two, and that's going to end up giving you two atoms of nitrogen, okay? For oxygen, there, is, there are three atoms of oxygen inside the parentheses, but you're going to take this two, and just like you did with the nitrogen, again, you're going to multiply it 
for oxygen, and that'll give you six. So now there are six atoms of oxygen. So, okay. So if you're looking at this, notice that you distribute whatever is inside the parentheses, you distribute that number um, inside the parentheses. Determine how many atoms of each element are in each formula below. So you've got manganese here. There isn't a number, so we're going to say one atom of magnesium, um, manganese. And then this three right here, you're going to distribute inside the parentheses for both oxygen and hydrogen. So you're going to say there are three atoms of oxygen and three atoms of hydrogen. So you have one atom of manganese, three atoms of oxygen, and three atoms of hydrogen. Now let's look at the next one. Once again, aluminum does not have a, a number there, so it's one atom of Al. And this three, you're going to distribute inside the parentheses, so it's going to go to both. So now there's chlorine, there's only three atoms of chlorine, but now you have three times three gives you nine atoms of oxygen. Okay, so the very last one here, we have here a two, so that means that there are two atoms of scandium, and then you have one atom of sulfur, but then remember you have this three, you're going to distribute it inside, so you have three atoms of sulfur, and four times three is 12 atoms of oxygen. Okay, so let's talk about coefficients now. Coefficients tell you how many molecules or how many formula units are present. Okay, remember that um, when we are talking about formula units, we're talking about ionic compounds. Okay, and when we talk about molecules, we are actually talking about covalent compounds, okay? So when determining how many atoms, you multiply the coefficient to all the elements. So you multiply the coefficient, okay? So in this case, we have here, uh, the coefficient that we have is five, that is um, right outside of the molecule for water. So you're gonna take this five and you're gonna distribute it or multiply it with every element that it is right outside of. So 5 times 2 for hydrogen would give us 10 atoms of hydrogen. And then over here, oxygen is 1. So it's 1 oxygen atom, but it's 5 times 1, and that would give us 5 atoms of oxygen. So if you're looking at this picture-wise, what is actually happening is you've got water molecule here, but this five is saying that you have five of these water molecules. Okay, so if I've got one, two, three, four, five, I've got five water molecules, and if I count the total number of hydrogens, I should have a total of 10 hydrogens within these five water molecules. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I've got 10 hydrogens, um, atoms of hydrogen. One, two, three, four, five, and I've got five oxygen atoms. Okay. Now, right here, the next one I have here, a five is my coefficient. So I'm gonna take this five and I'm gonna distribute it for every single element that I have in this formula. Okay, but, so I'm gonna distribute this five. Don't forget that this two, you're gonna distribute for every single element that is inside the parentheses. Okay, so we're gonna do that distribute it for each one. So you have five formula units of magnesium acetate, and we have five atoms of magnesium, 
because there isn't a number here, so we're going to say that there are five atoms. Now there are a total of, there's two carbon atoms times two, that gives you four carbon atoms, but then you have four carbon atoms, you have four of these formula units. So four times five would give us 20 atoms of carbon. So carbon is really, we've got two times two, this two times two times five. That'll give us the 20. Um, let's start with the hydrogen. The hydrogen we have three times two times two, and then this is times five right here. So that'll give us a total of 30, 30 atoms of hydrogen. And then I've got oxygen right here. I've got two times two times five. So that's gonna give me 20 oxygen atoms. If we were to draw this out, we would have just five molecules of magnesium acetate but then of the five, when you start counting it up, you would have five magnesium atoms, 20 carbon atoms, 30, car um, 30 atoms of hydrogen, and 20 um, oxygen atoms. So that would be your total number. Let's do some practice problems. And I'm gonna go ahead and do it. Look up once you guys are finished to check your answers, okay? So you wanna find out for each element in each formula, So look up when you're finished. You have five formula units of zinc fluoride right here. Um, and then you have five atoms of zinc. And you have five times two would give you 10 atoms of fluorine. You have here three formula units of beryllium hydroxide. And you have three atoms of beryllium, three times one times two times three would give you a total of six atoms of oxygen and then one times two would give you two and then two times three would give you six atoms of hydrogen okay so i hope this helps you understand how to um, what the subscripts mean and how to count coefficients it's really um, just a counting game when we have formula writing being able to count the subscripts and the coefficients okay I hope this helped you guys. Bye.